feel, understand the, the impact of what they're doing. Controversial decisions are definitely part of any position of responsibility. Are you surprised by the vitriol or the drama that surrounds some of the things that you say and do? Well, it's kind of disappointing that people somehow can say, oh, I'm lying, I must be lying. You know, it's a favorite line. He's not telling the truth. And when I was a, a deputy, when I was a sergeant of the department, I spoke truth to power in the most oppressive environment possible, which is under the administration of Lee Bach and Paul Tanaka, who are both federal inmates as we speak. And they really knew how to destroy careers. And I didn't care because I came across corruption, cheating. I pointed it out. I put it in writing. I said, I'm not going to participate. And this is going to lead to the downfall of the organization. I was laughed at, ridiculed, isolated, uh, pretty much sent to the gulag. But I realized it, it was more important to me, my credibility, my integrity, than to buy in to a corrupt system, the good old boy crowd. In terms of recruitment, you have approximately 630 uh, retirees. Are you worried about being able to garner the talent you need to continue with community safety? We expect that we're going to continue to hire the best and the brightest to come, and we're hiring locally, not out of state anymore. We want our local kids to grow up to become deputies serving their own communities. We're going to raise our minimum education level in January 1st to an associate's degree. And I think we're going to be the first largest, large organization to do that. And so we, we are going to have a supply of very good candidates from now into the future. Are you incorporating additional things into training once that happens in terms of sensitivity and de-escalation and all of those that is, hot topic buttons that are... Um, all those hot topic buttons that politicians are jumping on the bag wanting to say, we are already doing those things. Implicit bias training. We have a lot of de-escalation training. We have a crisis intervention training. And a lot to do with, uh, you know, with dealing with the homeless, for example, with the mentally ill. We're constantly training. What kills us, though, is when there's a budget crisis, the first thing they get sacrificed is training. Hmm. And that's the thing what we need the most, and we need to meet more of it. So we're kind of robbing Peter to the pay Paul to see where we can get the training to happen. And uh, let's see what happens. All right, last word. What are you most proud of uh, in your term so far? You've been on board since 2018. Um, what are you most proud of what you've been able to do? I think the permanent ban on ICE is uh, an important achievement. I think the body cameras, those are two big campaign promises that I fulfilled. So we're well on our way to achieve all of the campaign promises I set out because I want to make sure I did what I set out to do, which is to serve the community and make it safer for everyone. Join Councilmember Mitchell Farrell, Mayor Eric Garcetti, and City Attorney Mike Fuhr for a special dialogue entitled Standing Up Against Hate. The online event will take place on Friday, September 18th at 12 p.m. and will feature leaders in the LA transgender and non-binary community. Standing Up Against Hate will discuss strategies to combat the rise of incidents locally. Check it out on lacityview.org forward slash live. Councilmember Gil Cedillo is hosting domestic violence workshops for anyone who is a victim or may know someone who is. These workshops are in multiple languages and are happening throughout September into October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. For more information, visit facebook.com forward slash CM Gil Cedillo. The Latino Theater Company will be streaming an archival recording of This is a Man's World, written and performed by Sal Lopez. The production is billed as a solo, semi-autobiographical coming-of-age story. Streamings are set through September 17th. Visit thelatc.org for more information. And that's a look at some virtual things to do.
tragedy strikes, it's okay not to be okay. I know this is tough, but we'll get through it. We've still got more to come if we're not careful. Los Angeles, city of the angels. We're all in for LA. That's the only way we're gonna beat this thing. Thank you, Los Angeles. We love you. Giving your child a strong start begins the moment they're born. Talk with them. Read with them. Sing and count with them. Talking, reading, singing, and counting to your child are simple ways you can bond with them, help strengthen their brains and bodies, and protect their health. Your voice, your hugs, your love build resilience and protect against the harmful effects of stress. So as California's Surgeon General, this is my prescription. Talk, read, sing. Go to first5california.com.
National Cheeseburger Day. Kretz is going to wear a cheeseburger tie. Yeah. Okay. We are, start one, we are getting there is started no now. Day for it. Council will come in. Good morning and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council. Today is Wednesday, September 16. I'm Noreen Martinez, the president of the City Council. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield present. Bonin. Bonin present. Buscaino. Here. Sidio. Sidio here. Harris Dawson. Present. Present. Kuretz. Present. Thank you, Council Member Harris Dawson. Kuretz. Present. Krikorian. Here. Lee. Present. Martinez. Present. O'Farrell. Present. Price. Rodriguez. Here. Rue. Present. Thank you, Council Member Rue. Blessing. I am the present. Thank you, Council Member. 13 members present and a quorum mandate president. First order of business. Approval of the minutes of September 15, 2020. Mr. Kerkorian moves and Mr. Bo uh, Mr. Bonin seconds next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Wesson moves and Mr. Lee seconds next. Madam President, would council like all items to go forthwith today? Without objection, that will be the order next. Item one is an item notice for public hearing. For item number one, the department recommends continuing items one, a through C and 1F through I to November 10, 2020 and confirming the liens for 1D and E. Without objection, that will be the order next. Items two through 20 are items for which public hearings have been held. Okay, members, are there any of these items that you wish to call special or introduce an amending motion? Mr. Harris Dawson. Thank you. I have a, a amending motion for item number eight. Uh, I move that the matter of the homelessness and poverty committee relative to the state of homeless state of homelessness emergency aid program, six quarterly expenditure report and reprogramming recommendations. Item number eight on today's agenda Council file number 18-0628 be amended to delete the Abridge home site at 5965 St. Andrews Place in Council District 8 and adopt the following in lieu of recommendations 2, 3, and 6 in attachment A of the August 14, 2020 Homeless Strategy Committee report as reflected in the full text that we provided for the clerk for placement on the council file. I'll second. Second by Mr. Bonin. Members, are there any other specials? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, what items can we go ahead and vote on? Would council like to vote on items two through seven and nine through 20 in as much as committee held public hearing? Okay, let's go ahead and call the roll on those items. Ooh, that's taking care of all of it. Please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Sidio. Sidio, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Correct. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Thank you, Councilmember Price. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Wesson. Aye. 
14 ayes. These items are adopted. Thank you. Let's go ahead and um, go into public comment. Madam Clerk, can you please um, read out the call, call in information? Certainly. As indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669 254 5252 and use meeting ID number 160 535 8466 and then press the pound sign. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once submitted, into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Let me repeat, call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press the pound key. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Madam President, would you like me to explain the Absolutely. speaking Absolutely, thank you, Mr. City Attorney, yes. And thank just you. remind folks what items uh, are available or also make a public comment on today. I'll do that, thank you. So to members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute per item uh, to speak and one minute for general public comment. We'll tell you when your time's up. When speaking on the agenda items, uh, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not speaking on topic, or if we can't tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you'll get one brief warning from me or the president. If you do not then immediately get clearly on topic or again stray off topic, the president will cut you off and you'll forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. We're gonna take 30 minutes total of public comment and I believe the items that are open for public a comment are items one and eight. Um, finally, um, as you know, Zoom has reconfigured its settings, and we now have to admit members of the public into the meeting one by one, unmuted. Uh, so we understand that you'll probably be listening to the meeting on channel 35 or a computer or other device. Please try to keep one ear, though, on the phone, because when somebody addresses you, that means you've been entered into the meeting, unmuted, and it's your turn to speak. At that point, please tell us which items you'd like to speak on and begin. Um, if you can and turn down the volume on the computer or other device you're listening on because if you just listen to the broadcast there's a time delay and it's going to create a lot of problem so those are the speaking rules madam president we're ready to take the first caller okay let's go ahead and take the first caller thank you caller with the phone number ending in 1108 please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on Caller with the phone number ending in 1108, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yeah, hi, it's uh, Daniel Gus. I'd like to speak on item one, and I think Mr. Fauble said, no, I'll just leave it one and general public comment. Okay, Mr. Gus, go ahead. You have one minute for each. Thanks, and I should have One uh, minute for said, each, thank you. Sorry, Mr. Gus, I should have said I'm beforehand sorry. to everyone, please start with your agenda items before going to general public comment. That's just for everyone, oh, thank you. Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, council members, on item number one, it, it talks about nuisance abatement costs. Mr. Wesson has to recuse himself from this item because a property he owns has been repeatedly cited for nuisance problems. He has been cited for a rental property that he owns that is used as a uh, quasi nursing home or uh, medical recovery facility. So Mr. Wesson has to recuse himself from item number one because this is something that he has been cited for violating also. He's been cited for having appliances in the yard, indoor furniture in the yard. Whether or not it was his, he's the property owner, he needs to recuse himself from this. And with that said, uh, I'm going to move to my general public comment. Council members and members of the public, I am proud to let you know that this morning, the LA Times has endorsed not Mr. Wesson, 
but his opponent, Holly J. Mitchell for L.A. County Supervisor. It is a reminder that Mr. Wesson's corrupt ways and abuses of the public have been recognized and as, as a disqualifying factor by the L.A. Times editorial board. Miss Holly Mitchell has been endorsed by the L.A. Times for L.A. County Supervisor. It is a rejection of Herb Wesson's time in city council, and especially as your president. That said, Ms. Martinez, I'm trying to find out why Alexis Wesson, Herb's daughter-in-law's salary for 2019 is missing from Transparent California. It is rumored that she got a massive raise during a time of austerity. Please make sure those numbers are made public. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay, next caller. The, the caller with the phone number ending in 7080. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yes. Caller, are you there? Uh, yes. Hello. Hi. Good morning. What item do you want to speak on? Uh, well, I can't speak on item nine, but uh, I guess general public comments. Okay, you have one minute. Go ahead. All right. Uh, name is Lorenzo Mutia. I'm from District 6, uh, uh, your district uh, council, President Martinez. And I uh, just wanted to say that uh, I'm pretty disappointed in the project room key status, uh, especially considering uh, the city gave a billion dollars to a lot of hotels. Um, and a lot of the, the higher-end hotels said no to taking in uh, homeless folks. Uh, I don't know why there's been lagging on trying to take over these rooms because clearly we're, we're still in the middle of a crisis. We were in a crisis before. We're still in a crisis right now. And um, also defund the police. It's got to happen sooner or later, and it will happen but probably when you're, y'all are in office. That's it. Next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 8933. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Um, Talia Dominic, item number um, 1605358466. Okay, the only two items available for comment today are items number one and eight. Um, the LA City Council meeting on Project Room Key. That's item number one. one. Yes, that's item number one. You want to speak thank on you. that item? You have a minute. Yes, please. Thank you. you. Yes, you have a minute. Go ahead. Mayor Garcetti, your failure to seize the hotel's commandeer under eminent domain is disgusting. You have Angelino dying under COVID-19 conditions and under regular conditions of houselessness in Los Angeles. This city has been one of the number one rates of house, houselessness in the United States, and you're still giving LAPD $3 billion? This is disgusting. These are your citizens under your watch. You fa have failed them time and time again. Please commandeer the city. San Francisco, or the hotel San Francisco has done this under eminent domain, why can Los Angeles not follow their lead? That is a great example. I yield the rest of my time. Mayor Garcetti, you are a disgusting piece of shit. Next caller. F you. Caller with the phone number ending in 7499. Yeah. Caller, are you there? Yes. Hi. What item do you want to speak on? Um, item 9 and general public comment. Item number 9 has already been voted on. The only two items available today, this morning, for public comment are item number 1 and number 8. Uh, okay. I was never queued in. Um, okay. Speaker, do you want to just provide general public comment? Hello? Are you there? I think the speaker dropped off. Okay, let's take the next caller. 
Caller with the phone number ending in 4528, please state your name and what item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 4528, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller, are you there? Yeah, uh, me? Yes. Please state your name and what item you'd like to speak on. Uh, general public comment um, by Kendall. Go ahead. You have one uh, minute. Okay. Um, I would like to speak on the failure of Project Room Key and um, just Garcetti, use eminent domain to commandeer the hotels. Like, uh, 25% of the goal has been met for Project Room Key, and you're basically abandoning it at this point. Uh, it's 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 disgusting. Like I I people are literally dying because of the heat stroke, and that's on your hands. That blood is on your hands, Mayor Garcetti, because you you refuse to do anything about it, and you'd rather pad your pockets with billions of dollars. I don't know how much money you have. But it's 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 honestly not okay. It's not okay. Um, and stop doing sweeps. Stop doing special enforcement zones. Uh, Next caller. Caller with the phone number ending in one two six four. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hello. Hello. What items do you want to speak on? Uh, no, I was just listening. Um, uh, I, I just called in to listen. Okay. Well, you're in public comment now, so if you don't have a comment, so they're going to knock me off. No, you can you can still listen, but we have to move on to the next okay. caller that wants to speak on an item. Next caller. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 4208. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 4208. Hello. Please state your Hello. name. Hello. What items do you want to speak on? Hello. Yes, good morning. What items do you want to speak on? Hello. Speaker. Uh, turn down the volume. I can't hear you at all. We can hear you. You just need to turn down your volume on your... I can only hear you through my TV and not through the phone. Hard to know what to do about that. So turn down the TV speaker and listen carefully to the phone. Which items would you like to speak on? Well, I'll just go ahead and give my uh, public comment. I wanted to speak okay. on item 8 and provide general public comment as well. This is Rob Kwan. Okay, you have one minute um, for each, go assuming ahead. Assuming I hear Stefan Fobble in the background, then I'll go ahead. Um, you know, on, on item eight, I just wanted to note that, you know, we, we should make efforts under the, the governor's orders to uphold the Brown Act. And if we're having amending motions, they should be public, publicly posted, just like they would be in a public meeting. Uh, and the same goes for when you delay meetings and don't update the agenda or send out an alert. For my general public comment, I wanted to talk about last week's vote. I was really struck when uh, you had your meeting last Wednesday. We were all set up to discuss pro Project Room Key and our coordination with LASA. And apparently not a single council member other than Mike Bonin wanted to publicly question LASA and the CAO on this. We waited for four months on a report detailing how Project Room Key has failed to reach a third of its goal and is now ramping down and none of you had any questions. Even worse, it appeared his, his inquiry was entirely unwelcome by the council president. And that's really a clear indictment of this council's dysfunction. Because once council member Bonin opened the door, it appeared like a hell of a lot of you actually had good questions for Lhasa and the CAO. It was a valuable conversation, but one that almost didn't happen. How can you ever act surprised at our city's ongoing folly when you fully, you avoid fully discussing these issues, even when you're out of your fucking debt? Please commandeer some fucking hotels. 
Uh, and lastly, Councilman Baru, <laughs> you refused to apologize to the Los Feliz Ledger for sending out misleading a campaign email in their name. And now you've been caught circumventing fundraising limits, misusing your office holder account, and violating LA Municipal Code. It's a bad look, bro. Next caller. Caller with the phone number ending in 5137, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 5137, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Can you turn off your device? Right. We're getting feedback. Sure. Um, good morning. My name is Jamie Penn. I'm the resident representative for the Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council, Subdistrict 3. I'm also a volunteer for Koreatown for All. I'd like to make a uh, general public comment. Okay, go ahead. You have one minute. Thank you. As call after call demonstrates, the general public has a better understanding of what's within your power and better ideas to meet this moment than the ones being deployed at present. Our approach simply does not meet the challenge of the moment that we're in. In fact, we're absolutely doing your job for you. While you all collect paychecks and have decided to only endure 30 minutes of our input, um, I personally had the mayor in his household call LEPD on me on two separate occasions these past two weekends because we were doing a drive for PPE and volunteers because none of you will rise to this moment. Omni Hotels received general taxpayer subsidies. They were not interested in Project Room Key because they were afraid it would impact their brand. In fact, 25% of the rooms promised have been secured. And over the weekend, unhoused people died. And according to the county medical examiner coroner's office, 18 people died. And I guess we're just more worried about brand. So we're all offering you these solutions on our own free time. Um, as I said before on a public comment maybe a month or so ago, Thank we're organizing against you. The longer Thank each you. of you sit within action, the more time we have to organize. Thank you. Caller. Caller with the phone number ending in 1148, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 1148, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yes, I'd like to speak on all available items and general public comment, please. Okay, you have two minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Okay, thank you. Good morning, uh, public. Um, Miss Mart Martinez, apologize to Miss Autry. That's my first comment. Apologize. Uh, item number one, these, uh, oh, and thank you so very much for letting the public speak a whole 30 minutes so, Mr. of Moses, would you millions get of on people. Items? Item number one, thank you. Uh, these liens that are, you're placing on people's property are disgusting, Ill illegal. They're just disgusting. This should be a moratorium on all these liens. And of course, it's no surprise that Wesson, uh, King, AKA King of Homelessness, uh, during his tenure, he is responsible for these homeless people. The, the, the epidemic of homelessness and his corrupt, corrupt policies, him and uh, Garcetti. It's no surprise that his ho one of his homes is, a, is a, a blight on the city. He is a blight on the city. Corrupt, criminally corrupt, dog face. Herb Wesson needs to be in jail with Huizar. These liens need to cease. Cease. You're taking people's properties deliberately. Sleazy Marquis Dawson is regularly taking properties from people. Uh, Wesson had a $60,000 lien on, on uh, a person's property a couple weeks ago. Item number eight, it's, it's, it's almost amazing that you would even bring up the word homeless. You, the way you've raped, you, you have raped the city, the people of the city of Los Angeles with these HHH, this HHH bonds, $1.2 billion you all wasted and put in your pocket through campaign contributions to developers. You're disgusting people and you're guilty of murder. People are on the streets. Sir, you, you want to move trade. on to your general public comment, please? 
Uh, yes. Thank I'm you. sure you're looking forward to that. The L.A. Sleazy Council is down, has reached heights of new lows on 9-9 last year. Booskai Anus went on a rant for KMX Radio, a commercial when people are dying in the streets, can't even breathe. He's up there putting on commercials. Something coming up is Sleazy Dawson. Is that it again? I've told the public he has spent almost a million dollars, a million dollars when people are dying on office moves. Well, he has another one coming up. He couldn't get his hands on the unemployment office, so now he's going after another building for 300 something thousand dollars on Crenshaw Boulevard along with evicting the FIBA Center, uh, revicting a thousand people out of Dorset Village. This, these people are criminals. Corrupt LA sleazy council. And we want it stopped. We want our democracy Thank you, sir. back. Next speaker. with the phone number ending in 4430, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 4430, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, what items do you want to speak on? Um, general comment. Okay, you have one minute. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I think it's shady and weird that you're not letting anybody hear any other comments. Um, so Project Room Key has been a failure. We invested money into these hotels and they're not reciprocating. So we are paying twice. We're paying for the bailout money and we're paying the volunteer organizations to help the unhoused residents. Um, during the pandemic, during the heat wave and during these fires, it's unconscionable to let people languish on the streets. Uh, over a dozen unhoused residents died over the last heat wave. And uh, if we don't do something, it, it's, just, it's just not something that I can stomach. It's really upsetting. Uh, please let other people hear the comments. We should be able to hear all public comments. That's all. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, let's go ahead and take the next caller. Caller with the phone number ending in 6068, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 6068, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, yes, this is Richie Serjanko from Sunrise Movement LA and People City Council. I would have liked to speak on item nine, uh, but I understand that's not the public comment, so I'll just do general public comment, please. Okay, thank you, please, one minute. Okay, great, I love how public comment is only 30 minutes, Nuri. I love that you're on the town hall like, oh, my God, I wish that I could hear from more of my constituents, but they're just, where are they? They're not calling in. Yo, we had 45 minutes yesterday, 30 minutes today. How do you expect to hear from your constituents, Nuri? How? You don't give them enough the fucking time. Uh, anyways, I won't yell, but I uh, would have liked to talk about item nine, uh, project room key. You still haven't, uh, you know, commandeered the hotels or finished uh, the 15,000 hotel rooms that you promised. 19 unhoused folks died over Labor Day weekend uh, when it was extremely hot. I wonder if any of you care. Wesson, uh, great job opening the mall for a cooling center. But other than that, all of you seem like you're completely fine with 19 unho unhoused folks dying. Uh, David Rue, you fucking punk. Uh, you haven't apologized for uh, the Los Salis ledger, as as Rob uh, as Rob mentioned. Nice of you to show up today. Uh, you attended both meetings this week. That's very Thank impressive. You very much, very sir. Next speaker. 
Caller with the phone number ending in 5245. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 5245. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 5245. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 8420. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 8420. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Astrid Coda, and I'd like to give general public comment. You have one minute. Go ahead. Um, so agenda and item number nine isn't um, available for public um, Anyways, I'm just going to. So as you all know, Project Groom Key has only been 25% successful. This is not enough. And due to their lack of efforts, uh, we've run into a serious ramification, and that is that people are dying on the streets. A total of 19 unhoused people, 19 human beings, 19 beating hearts cease to exist uh, during the Labor Day weekend heat wave. And you all let that happen. And um, also, just to mention, uh, you also allow for three unhoused people to lose their lives uh, just, just per day. That's just on the regular. So pretty fucked up. Anyways, um, uh, council members, their true colors are really showing. Our unhoused community needs access to housing, health care, and resources. Uh, what, do they, what they do not need are gang members dressed um, as law enforcement, brutalizing, dehumanizing, traumatizing, and abusing them. We are in a pandemic that's eating our population alive and an environmental crisis that's literally turned our mountains and homes into ash. Um, I demand Thank you, that- Thank you, Next speaker. Immediately. Caller with the phone number ending in 5314. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 5314, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hello? Yes, what items do you want to speak on? Hi, I'd like to make general public comment. My name is Kessler. Okay, go ahead. You have one minute. Hi. Um, so as everyone's literally been stating, we wanted to talk on item nine, but we can't. And I think it's ridiculous. We've been calling for six months straight, telling you guys to defund the police and use that money towards other things. Like everyone said, there's literally 19 souls that left the earth because you all are that selfish that you don't care about human bodies on the ground. I've also been watching the live feed and none of you are paying attention. You're going through your papers. You're talking to each other. You're getting up and walking. If you give us 30 minutes to talk, can you not sit for 30 minutes and listen? You're literally working for us. That is your job. You all look pathetic, and I cannot wait to vote every single one of you out. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 7719. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 7719. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you hear me? It's Eric Previn. Yeah, and Mr. I'd Previn, like to speak turn, on down your, turn down your device because we're getting feedback from your end. Yeah, my device is off, All so right. you shouldn't hear anything. What items do you want to speak on? I'll speak on one, eight, and a general public comment, and I'll, I'll remind you that these are Caller with the phone number ending in so you still have your device okay. on. You can still hear, I can, we can still hear the feedback. I know I turned it off. Somehow right, it was turned Thanks. back Go on. Go ahead and speak on your two items and then your general public comment. Go ahead. Okay. Well, for starters, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about why you're amending item eight in the way that you are. 
and I noticed it's hard to follow when you do it on the fly, as a previous speaker mentioned. And ordinarily in a council public meeting, it would be circulated, but we can't see it, so it's very upsetting. Um, and I noticed that it, it, was, it, it talked about sufficient funding being available within HEAP money. HEAP is homeless, emergency, et cetera. Now, Councilmember Rue and Councilmember Krikorian know that our whole neighborhood wanted to have a public facility available so people could go to the bathroom in a dignified way while riding the metro into our communities to help out. But they, they stonewalled us. And uh, Rue took a lot of money from NBC Universal executives and all the, we got a bunch of public benefit money that can't possibly be spent on this. We applied for heap money or we told Krikorian to do so like O'Farrell did in his district, but no action whatsoever. So it's extremely, extremely upsetting. And shifting over to uh, the transit occupancy tax um, waivers, you know, that have been given to all of these so, hotels, Mr. Prevo, including I, I, I don't think yeah. that's open to public comment. Do you want to go to your general public comment to talk about that? No, I want to go back to item number one, which is the lien item, because I wanted to draw a, a couple of comments there, which are that liens against homeowners who, for example, the people at 12732 West Barbara Ann Street, an older couple, um, there was some trash left on their property. They were cited and told to clean it up. There was an open uh, storage thing. They hadn't fenced off something. But again, to come after these people with an $880 penalty, these are folks who, who can barely get by in a pandemic. And Krikorian, now ordinarily, they would say, oh, oh sorry, you came down here. You figured out where it is. So in the meeting, talk to your council member. What are they supposed to do now? Nobody says that. These people are just purely disenfranchised. And, you know, someone ought to bring you uh, to court and make it clear that these are fake public hearings. And it's just, so it's unbelievable please, please because you've denied general public so comment, much. Mr. You do What's that? You, general please. public comment? Yes. Thank you, Faubel. You're so diligent. Uh, you know, the, the Kutak Rock LLP firm that is getting two contracts today with the city uh, one is an extension to provide uh, HFA legal services retroactive to October 2018. That smells to high heaven. And then another one is going forward um, to request approval for an additional contract with them. So why is this in the section of the uh, agenda today where you can't speak on it? And, you know, why, why is the public denied a Friday meeting? Why have so many committee meetings evaporated? As I think Mr. Sergenko said, you want to hear from the people, but then you deny them all of the possible opportunities. And it's even worse. The County Board of Supervisors, who you aspire to be, yesterday denied, took, spoke for five and a half hours and denied the public access to the items after the sheriff spoke, after many interested parties, the public health people spoke. We weren't able to comment. So this is not input. This is being able to audit, which is something out of a totalitarian regime. And I'm not accusing you of being a totalitarian you, because Mr. you don't know Previn, what you're doing. Your but you are certainly a regime. Thank you, and Mr. Previn. Okay, that concludes public comment. Let's go ahead and take up item number one. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino, absent. Sedil. Sedil, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Rodriguez. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Wesson, aye. Wesson, yeah. Going back to Council Member Price. Aye. Going back to Council Member Rodriguez. Aye. 
13 ayes. The department's recommendations are adopted. Okay, let's move on to item number eight. This was um, called special by Mr. Harris Dawson for an amending motion. Mr. Dawson, do you want to speak on this issue? Or can we, are we prepared to vote? Prepared to vote. All right, thank you. Please call the roll on item number eight as amended. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino absent. Sedio. Sedio, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Wesson, aye. 13 ayes. This item is adopted as amended. Okay, thank you. Um, members, let's move on to verbal motions. Madam Clerk, how many motions do you have? Um, Madam President, there are 10 verbal motions for the clerk to read into the record. Okay, let's start with the first one. The first Rule 16 motion introduced by Council Member Cedillo moves that $75,000 in the CD1 portion of Street Furniture Revenue Fund be transferred to the Public Works Fund to fund various beautification projects throughout CD1. And a second. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you. The next verbal motion, also a Rule 16 introduced by Council Member Cedillo, transfers $20,516 in the CD1 portion of Street Furniture Revenue Fund to the General Services Fund for installation of lighting in a plaza being developed into an outdoor space for the community in CD1. And second. Ms. Rodriguez, second that. Go ahead. Thank next you. One. The next Rule 16 motion is introduced by Council Member Rue. This transfers $80,000 from the LADWP Blanket Authority to the Transportation Trust Fund for overtime costs associated with traffic control during construction of the Sunset Plaza Water System Improvement Project in CD4. And a seconder? Is there a second? second. Mr. Koretz. Thank you. The next Rule 16 motion authorizes a transfer of $600,000 from the Bureau of Street Services funds from their salaries, general and construction expense funds to their hiring hall salaries and benefits funds. This has been presented by Council Member Krikorian and seconded by Council Member Blumenfield. Mr. Blumenfield, can you confirm that? Confirmed. Thank you. Next. The next verbal motion is co-presented by Council Members Rodriguez and Martinez. This moves that the city attorney be requested to prepare an ordinance to create a Valley Generating Station Community Amenities Trust Fund. Hold on for just a second. That's, yeah. That we're going to hold off on that one until next week. We're still working on that. Apologize for the confusion. Is that correct, Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Yeah. Madam President, right, go ahead and would you like me to continue with the other verbals? Yeah, continue with the, with the rest of the verbals. Thank you, Madam President. Next is a motion introduced by Council Member Krikorian and second by Council Member Price referred to the Budget and Finance Committee as well as to the Ad Hoc Committee on Job Creation Plan relative to the Chief Legislative Analyst to report with the assistance from the Bureau of Contract Administration, the Chief Procurement Officer, and the City Attorney with input from the Small Business Commission on potential changes to the definition of small business for procurement preference programs based on gross receipts and recommendations for future evaluation of this threshold. Is there a second? Uh, yes, by uh, Council Member Price. Mr. Price, can you confirm that for us? 
Yes. Thank you. Next one. Next is a verbal motion introduced by Councilmember Rue, referred to the Planning and Land Use Management Committee relative to the Department of City Planning and the Chief Legislative Analyst's Office to report back on whether new hotels uses in conjunction with incentives based on residential uses have the potential to negatively impact the overall goals of housing, promoting incentive programs and policies such as the density bonus and the transit-oriented communities programs. Is there a second to this motion? Second. Second by Mr. Koretz. Next. Next is a motion introduced by Council Member Rodriguez referred to Council relative to the issuance of bonds not to exceed $5 million to finance improvements located at 13931 Balboa Boulevard in Council District 7 that will be used by the Children's Hunger Fund. Is there a second to this motion? I'll second it. Next. Next is a resolution introduced by Councilmember Rodriguez congratulating all of you UCLA Medical Center on its centennial and commends its ex exemplary contributions to the city of Los Angeles. Is there a second? I'll second that. Or did Mr. Cedillo, did you? Mr. Cedillo wants a second. Thank you. Next is a resolution also introduced by Councilmember Rodriguez congratulating Mr. Mark Torres on the 25th anniversary of his show Travel Tips for Atslan and commends him for his exemplary contributions to the city of Los Angeles. Is there a second? Cedillo seconds. Mr. Cedillo seconds. And that is all, Madam President. Okay, members, any of you wish to introduce a verbal motion? Okay, seeing none. What's before us now, Madam Clerk? Council has motions for posting and referral. Posted and referred. Members, are there any announcements? Any adjourning motions? Mr. Koretz? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I would like to adjourn in memory of an old friend, uh, Gail Christensen, who passed away at age 90 um, last month. Uh, she was uh, a multifaceted individual who was an actress, singer, dancer, and a writer, lyricist, a radio news director, a publicist, and uh, at a later point when she had kids, she became a stay-at-home mom. Um, when, when that provided her a lot of extra time, she became uh, much more active as an animal rights and animal welfare activist, which uh, she remained uh, for a good 30 years plus. Um, she, along with Gretchen Weiler, was uh, the founder of, uh, of the Genesis Awards which for many years uh, recognized uh, positive portrayals of animals in the media um, and animal rights and welfare issues in the media. Um, she uh, also uh, did a number of things in, the, in that uh, effort uh, relating to her uh, uh, background as an editor and, and writer. Um, she also, uh, I got to know her better uh, almost 30 years ago when she served on an animal issues task force that we had in West Hollywood that I created, um, which uh, dealt with uh, what animal rights and animal welfare issues the city of West Hollywood could take on and uh, set the tone for a good 30 years of, of uh, support for uh, animal issues legislatively, both internally and uh, sponsoring state legislation. Um, she, she was a very caring individual. 
um, especially about animals and also about human beings, but more notably uh, animals uh, because she stood out in that arena. Um, she is survived by her two children, Kevin and Karen, and her brother, uh, singer Jack Jones, who she used to sing with uh, professionally um, in the earlier part of her career. Um, in lieu of flowers, the family requests that uh, donations to charities that protect animals and the environment uh, be made. And uh, may she rest in peace after a life uh, of good, well lived. Thank you, Mr. Koretz. Mr. O'Farrell? Thank you, Madam President. Every now and again, cross paths with people, either family members or new friends or old friends that every single time you see them, you feel fortified, you feel better uh, because of the warmth and soulfulness that they generate uh, through the sparkle in their eyes or through the personality or contributions that they uh, provide to every situation they're in. And one such person we lost last week uh, and that is uh, a lot of our collective friend, Jorge Nunez. Um, so I'd like to adjourn uh, today's council meeting in honor of a proud Salvadoreño, Jorge Nunez, uh, who was a tireless fighter for a better world with peace and social justice at the forefront. He came to the United States in the 1980s, feeling the terrible violence unleashed by the government of his beloved El Salvador against the civilian population. Since his arrival in California, Jorge gave himself fully to the struggle for the oppressed and the dignity for all human beings. In El Salvador, he worked closely with San Romero de America, who influenced his actions forever through liberation theology. Together with uh, other compadres, he founded uh, COSIS, it, which is Committee in Solidarity with the Church in El Salvador in Los Angeles. He was a member of the Farabundo Marti Solidarity Committee of Los Angeles. For the past 20 years, which is how long I knew Jorge, he's been known for his social service work in Los Angeles through the Salvadoran American Leadership and Educational Fund, Salaf, as a community organizer, promoting the vote of Salvadorans and Latinos, and as an active member of the board of directors there. He later became a prominent staff member for State Assembly Speaker Fabian Nunez and subsequently completed his career as assistant to the President Pro Tem of the California State Senate, Kevin De Leon. And Mr. De Leon and I were exchanging pictures over the weekend of Jorge. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to show a lot of these photos today, but um, they're, I think they're being shared on social media um, because he was a loyal, public servant on behalf of then Senate Pro Tem Kevin De Leon, and we shared our friendship and he and his entire organization um, are just profoundly uh, affected uh, by Jorge's passing. Throughout these years, uh, Jorge dedicated himself to working tirelessly for the rights of immigrants and their families, including TPS holders, day laborers, and braceros. He never said no, and his desire to help was always present, even in his last days. Jorge leaves behind a beautiful family, his wife, Sonia, and four children, Damaris, Edwin, Jorge, and Marvin. His humility and dedication to work are his finest characteristics. His kindness and sense of humor were his ticket in all circles. He leaves us a private, a priceless legacy, uh, and we celebrate his life and honor in his memory by continuing to build a better world. He was a quiet but obvious presence. Uh, we traveled to El Salvador together in 2015 for the beatification of um, Monsignor Romero. Um, and as I mentioned, so many people knew Jorge uh, and whether it was family, community, political circles, uh, and we need more people like him in this world right now to bring compassion, understanding, patience, joy, 
uh, and enlightenment to the proceedings. And uh, that's how I will remember him. And I'm just so sorry for his loss to his family, his colleagues in governmental circles. Uh, may he rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. And if I may ask um, if you could add me to the adjourning motion. I met Jorge, we often called him Jorgito, um, through my husband. My husband and him uh, were friends, and we learned of his passing through Mr. Cedillo, who let us know last week he had passed away. But uh, we met him in the late 90s. My husband and him would do voter registration projects up and down in the state of California. But there was uh, an incredible, incredible sense of humanity on his part. Um, he not only was humble, but just one of the most caring people I've ever had to work with. And I had no, I learned that he had gotten sick um, and he was having uh, really difficult times this year. And he's gonna be sorely missed, but I've got to say, he was one of the people that we met early on doing the work where you know, no one else was. And he never ever hesitated to meet us in the Valley and figure out how we can partner together to advance the cause of the Latino community in Los Angeles, but particularly the importance of voting um, and getting our folks to register to vote. So he's gonna be sorely missed. Uh, we used to call him Jorgito, which was his nickname. May he rest in peace. Our condolences go out to his wife and his family. He was a good man. Mr. Cedillo, over to you. I know you and I share similar stories about Jorge. Uh, you probably know him a little longer than I do, but um, we were often in the same circles. Um, and thank you, sir, for letting me know that he had passed away. Mr. Cedillo? Yes, uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. O'Farrell for his eloquence in capturing perfectly who the essence of Jorge was. Um, so I won't add much to it other than to say, I always saw him obviously as a hard worker and omnipresent for any uh, great initiative that we were taking on. Uh, but the other part about him was he was so diplomatic and in politics, sometimes we have a, a tendency in the nature of politics to be very affirmative about our ideas, push our ideas uh, aggressively, uh, push our agendas aggressively, as is our, our duty. Uh, but uh, with Jorge, he was such a diplomat. He was uh, not neutral because he was very affirmative about uh, advocating for, for the rights and the place for for people, for immigrants, for uh, you know, voting rights. Uh, so he wasn't a neutral, but he was a diplomat. And he was a person that you knew that you could always talk to. Uh, he would sometimes be the vehicle to help resolve disputes over strategy and tactics. Uh, an extremely dear man, very endearing in his, his nature. I mean, he was just, uh, if you had him in a bottle, it'd be a, a syrup of endearment. Uh, that's who he was. He just exuded that. And he's just uh, a pleasant person to see. And I'm just uh, so sad and my family's sad uh, because of all the time we spent together. Let me add this, that uh, all of our staffs work very hard and, um, you know, they, they're underappreciated. Uh, the, being a member of staff is not the most glamorous job. Uh, you take it because you believe in it. Uh, he was the epitome of that, uh, working so hard without uh, uh, the credit, uh, without the compensation, uh, simply for the uh, fulfillment of the promise of service. And uh, he embodied what uh, the best of all our staffers uh, bring to, to governance. And so I just wanna thank you for that and <clears throat> Bless you, Jorge, and your family, and estamos contigo siempre. Adelante. Thank you, Mr. Madam Cedillo. President, Mr. if Roo, I could have a moment. Uh, hold on for just a second, Mr. Wesson. Mr. Rue has been on the queue to speak. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and, and thank you, Councilmember O'Farrell. Um, uh, this is a shock to me. Um, I mean, as everyone else has said, I mean, Jorge, Jorge was a, he was a dear friend. Um, I've known him for maybe close to 25 years now. I remember when, when Sal, Sal left first started, uh, he was like literally um, uh, one of the first, with, with Carlos Vacarenos, he was like literally the other staff there. And I was at the Korean American Coalition and we used to work together all the time on a variety of issues. And he, 
became the, a pillar, <clears throat> a pillar of a leader in, in the Salvadorian American community. And um, through all my ups and downs, we've kept in touch and we were always friends and he was always my go-to person. And um, wow, it, this is just a, a shock. I mean, he was too young and he was a dear friend and you know if i could be also included and I, i'm just in shock right now and um uh but thank you for eloquently uh talking about his life because he will be uh very missed yeah thank you mr Ru. mr wesson yeah you know i want to thank everybody for all of the kind remarks that they've made about jorge he was just that extremely good person that no one ever had anything negative to say uh, uh, about him. He was committed. He was always fun to be around. You know, if you needed him in, at three in the morning, he'd be there at five minutes to uh, three <laughs> in the morning. But I'll never forget, I don't know about you guys, but I would imagine most of us every now and then in our lives get a terrible toothache. For me, I never get a toothache Monday through Friday, okay? It's always when all of the dental offices are closed. So it was one Saturday morning years ago that I had a, a breakfast with, with Jorge and I was in such pain. And this guy got on the phone and within an hour and a half, I was at some dental office and uh, was taken care of. He was resourceful and he was the kind of person that if he asked someone to do something, they would just do it for him. He, he was impossible to refuse. He will be, be missed. Um, and I think for those of us that really knew him, we should just consider ourselves blessed that he crossed our paths. Because if you did really know Jorge, he made you a better human being. So I just say goodbye to my friend and uh, uh, we will see you. Well said Thank by you. all of you. Uh, he just sparkled. And, and I remember meeting him the very first time, 20 some, you know, about 20 years ago. And it was just at a Glassell Park meeting. And he sat there as a governmental representative uh, from the then House Speaker, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And he exhibited such grace uh, and generosity of spirit. He just reeked of it. Uh, and, you know, those kind of people uh, are, are fewer and far between, although we all have it within us. And I think that's the lesson. And I think that's his legacy. Uh, and, and all of you really convey that beautifully and, and total shock. I came across it on a Facebook post and I just like sat back in my chair and I was reeling because you just don't expect someone like him just to be gone all of a sudden, although he lived with his illness quietly for, for months, uh, which again is a testament to his strength. So uh, yes, uh, Madam President, we can all be on this journey motion uh, in kindred spirits on behalf of this beautiful soul that we all knew and loved. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell, and thank you for your beautiful words. May he rest in peace. Um, are there any other journey motions today? Okay, seeing none, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.